Infinite Reality is an innovation company powering the next generation of digital media and e-commerce through AI and immersive technologies. The company just closed a $350 million investment, acquires Land Vault in a $450 million deal, and the valuation of the company just soared to north of $5 billion. So with me is Amit Shah, IR's chief business officer. He rose to prominence as managing partner of Sierra Maya 360, which became 2015 top tech sports media and entertainment VC under his watch. In addition to being an early investor in companies such as Lyft and Carta, Amish has the foresight to invest in the drone racing league and Genko, which put him in a unique position to bring his expertise to the thriving esports business. And Tom Bushy is the founder and CEO of Sunderland Capital Partners, an operationally focused, long-term oriented investment firm, as well as CEO of Newberry Street. He has a two-decade long career as a successful investor, board member, and capital allocator. So welcome to both of you. Great to have you both here today. Thanks, Jane. Amish, let's start with you. And this $350 million investment, because that's the news here, values the company $5.1 billion. Who is the investor? How is that structured? Absolutely. Well, look, great to meet you. Great to be on the show. And what a transformational time for our company in a hot sector. Everyone's talking about AI, and we're really excited about how we're really using our technology and powering um, you know, brands, audience together. And luckily, we've been talking to a lot of investors, and there's a global family office that's really focused on tech media, real estate, uh, that really bought in on us. They wanted to make one AI play. They looked at the market. They saw the management team that's founded here by John Acunto, our CEO. He's got five exits. The last one was to Facebook with Mark Zuckerberg. And John's vision is why we're all here. And we've been executing on his plan. And they really feel not only is this the company for them long term as they look at investments, uh, they think that we are the winners in the category that becomes uh, immersive. And for us, that's how we see the world. But yeah, really transformational for the company. Exciting day. And, uh, you know, the valuation we think will soar from here. Can you elaborate a little bit on the company and the plan and how you plan to build the metaverse? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, metaverse is one of those things that's a buzzword. Some people love, some people don't. So the way we look at it is immersive, right? Uh, The way we try to categorize it and simplify it for people. If you think about your website today, it's a 2D experience. What we're giving clients and what we're giving brands and folks out there is uh, immersive experience. So an immersive experience, my kids are 10 and 12. They love playing Minecraft and they like playing Roblox. That is immersive. Now, when you take that into the consumer world and you think about uh, if you shop on Amazon or if you shop on any website, I know Mother's Day came. I had four websites up there and there's abandoned carts. We are solving that problem. And our solution really makes it interactive where you could actually price match. You could actually have a retail experience. So the next time I'm trying to buy my wife something for Mother's Day, I'm not going to have these abandoned carts, which is a 98% abandoned cart problem out there for the retailers. And I'm going to be able to, within a few minutes, buy something, have it shipped. And you know, we let them not only own their data and our clients I'm talking about, um, and we call it the metaverse. That's something Mark Zuckerberg jumped on with Meta by changing the name. The way we look at it is this is the next stage of the internet, and it's 3D websites is how we look at it. 3D websites and an e-commerce play, it sounds like as well. So what exactly. would you be using this $350 million investment for? Exactly. So look, it's all about growth capital. Uh, we actually have made six acquisitions already this year. There's probably another 10 to 20 that we're looking at globally. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about Land Vault. Um, one of the headlines is the $350 million investment. But our plans were always to expand globally. And the big investment really is going to accelerate our growth in the Middle East, also in Europe. We already started talking to brands, clients, investors in the region. In fact, we have some already on our cap table. What this is going to do is not only help us hire, acquire, and really get into new markets as they evolve. We look at the world globally. Uh, We have major plays. Our CEO likes to go where he thinks the puck's going to be if you're a hockey fan. 
Uh, and he thinks 10 years down the road. So we're focused around data. We're focused around AI. We're focused on the long-term value we could build for shareholders. So all this capital, and this is just the beginning. I mean, we hope to raise a considerable amount of money, but this was the big anchor that'll help us get to maybe even raise a billion dollars in the next few months. Wow. Very exciting to hear about this. And you mentioned Landfall. So what made that a, an attractive acquisition? Yeah, so we already were on the ground in the Middle East, and uh, we have plans to accelerate the end of 24 into 25. However, there's so much going on in the Middle East. And if you want to be in the Middle East, you have to be not just in the ground, but you have to have those clients. You have to speak their language. So as we look at our M&A strategy for growth, uh, we found a company back. uh, The founder's name is Samuel Huber. He started in the UK. He built an amazing company. But he saw the opportunity as he got the UAE government to be a client. Then all of a sudden, he got the Saudi government, Qatar government. Uh, He got uh, the biggest soccer brand in Egypt. He got big brands down there. He relocated to Dubai. And he's got an office in Dubai, Riyadh. And literally, you know, it's one thing to be here on the East Coast where we are and try to do business, which is eight hours ahead. And for the West Coast, it's 11 hours. And it's different being there on the ground, uh, working with clients, working with investors. Uh, Not only does he have close to $50 million of contracted revenue, but his clients are the governments, the tourism. Uh, He's building digital twins, very similar to our value prop and our vision. So when we met, it was literally he saw the, the world the same way we did as a company. And, you know, again, the the way we like to do acquisitions is let them be a creative, make sure the founders share in the same vision, have the mindset, you know, they look at it five to 10 years down the road. So what he saw was that we were able to accelerate what he's built, not just in the region, but he just got a client, the Lincoln Center right here in New York City. Uh, Recently, he also got NOLA. So he started dabbling into the U.S. and he realized, wow, if I could get onto the mothership of infinite reality take what they've built, throw it, throw what I built in my platform into what they're doing. How does this accelerate us? So we thought one plus one equals 10, maybe even a hundred. And I think you're seeing that not just by the, uh, the press that just came out with the capital that we raised, but how we're hitting uh, the Middle East. With what are some other companies in the IR portfolio? Yeah. So some other companies is we recently bought a company called Ethereal Engine. Uh, again, when we look at companies, we're trying to build around where we see the market in the future. Ethereal Engine is like a gaming engine, like Unity or Unreal. There's other gaming engines out there, but when we've met the founders, there are a bunch of desi- uh, there are a bunch of engineers and developers that were just super focused on building the best gaming engine in the world. So we love that vision, and what we were able to do is put them into our platform and accelerate their growth. We recently launched them at South by Southwest in February. Uh, you know, we actually are building out our no code platform, which we're going to be launching shortly in the next few weeks. And that no code platform is going to the SMB market. And think about back in the day when you had a website and you're trying to build a website and you had WordPress and how you could get that for $500 a month. So anyone who's got a website can use it. That is going to be our revolutionary no code platform that's built on Ethereal Engine's platform that we now rebranded to IR Engine. So again, that's one of the companies we're really excited about. The Drone Racing League. I don't know if you're a fan of drones, but yeah. uh, you know my son has like 30 of them these days. But <laughs> you know, when I met Nick Korbyshevsky, I made an investment when he had an idea in 2015. Nick had an idea of building uh, the F1 of drones. He literally did that. And he got some incredible investors from you know RSE Ventures, Matt Higgins and Stephen Ross. Uh, he got CAA, Liberty Media. He's got Lux Capital, Lara Hippo, and he built the Drone Racing League. So Drone Racing League was a recent fun acquisition that we had. And uh, what we're really going to do is the way we see the world is they have investors, they have brands, but drone delivery is a thing that Amazon's going to have 500 million of them by 2030. So when I think about coming onto your show and innovation, again, we think of the world 10 years from now, globally, getting these companies today and building into our infrastructure and then growing them from there. So those are two key acquisitions we made recently. And we have a whole bunch uh, on the list coming in the next few months. Tom, let's bring you in and, and talk a little bit about your role uh, with this um, as an investor, correct? And and what made you think this was a, a smart investment for the future? 
Thanks, Jane. Yeah, great to be with you and appreciate the, the time today. Uh, our vision at Newberry Street, which is a publicly traded SPAC, um, our board uh, really wanted to make sure we could find um, a great next-gen consumer behavior technology business that we could uh, use the public markets as a platform. And as you heard with Amish, again, six acquisitions in the last 12 months, what we've tried to do since signing our business combination agreement with the company was um, support and facilitate that growth, get them ready for the next phase as we become a public company together and ultimately continue to support that vision, which is very early days. And that's our job is to support great founders and great teams. And we've only just begun and the the growth over the last 12 months has been incredible and we're just thrilled to be a part of it and even more excited for the the future on nasdaq as a public company um and that's really it so we're we're thrilled to support the vision globally um and you know really believe in the efficacy of smaller growth companies emerging particularly on nasdaq um to go compete around the world with the biggest and best tech companies out there. And it's not easy. The capital markets have been challenging, obviously, over the last couple of years, particularly for smaller companies. But we really believe that if you can bring a great product and a great team and have a great vision, um, particularly as a platform for M&A as we scale, uh, we really believe the public markets will continue to be a growth opportunity for infinite reality. And we're, again, thrilled to be a part of that uh, journey with Amish and and John and, and the rest of the team. Well, when you're here during the IPO, we'll have to set up an interview in the studio. So uh, that would be great to, to see you guys here. What about establishing um, a presence in the Middle East and Europe? Um, it sounds like global is is the goal here. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Look, when we're looking for partners, the reason we picked Tom, Tom's a fundamental investor. He's got investments in Europe. Uh, he holds them for a long time. So when you're thinking about you know getting shareholders and getting investors, you want people that bought into the vision, love what we're doing globally. And when you mentioned Europe and Middle East, we have Francois who built Discovery Sports Events. Uh, he's our CEO of Europe. Francois started there when it was a startup and built it to a multi-billion dollar business. So Francois is actually in Paris. He's signing up a lot of brands, a lot of clients that you're going to hear in the next couple of weeks to months that are massive entities. So our European expansion, we're also targeting a UK company that we're looking to acquire in the next few weeks as well. So our Europe strategy has been in process for over a year. We've been educating clients, and now we're going to be closing some major deals and major verticals from luxury retail uh, to also uh, sports brands, sports teams, um, also on the telco side. So again, there's a lot of action in Europe. And again, with Land Vault in the Middle East, Now, think about it. Not only do they have the governments behind them, but they even have them as investors. They've done business with Saudi tourism. They've also done uh, with brands like Heineken and others in the region. And they've been building digital twins. So for F1 Abu Dhabi, they built the digital twin for the race. So again, there's a lot of strategy that we're talking about on how we could take over the market. And the key for us is it's a SaaS model and the long-term value of clients. We like to sign deals that are multi-year deals. On average, you know, our our deals are three to five years and some are even longer. So again, the strategy for Europe and Middle East is today, but next time we might be on the show, we might be talking about a company that we're looking at in Asia or India. So again, we're looking at it as a, a very explosive growth strategy that's quick. As Tom mentioned, we did six acquisitions in the last 12 months. I wouldn't be surprised if we do another 10 in the next 12 months. Yeah. Well, so, and Tom, let's uh, get, what have you both weigh in on this final question, your growth plans, anything else you want to share about that? And Tom, you can go first. Yeah, nothing really to add to what Amish said, other than, you know, we're here to build the best team. And ultimately we believe that a platform business, particularly with uh, public access, as we go through the, the, the merger, um, will be continually attractive. We want to be the best home to great companies to continue to add to our product portfolio and people portfolio. And we believe that ultimately can create a lot of value, uh, particularly for, for the public markets. Yeah. And I think, Jane, just to add, we got to build you in the metaverse. I think what we need to do is that set we could easily have. So then we could start doing this with your avatar into the uh, over there. And then look, when we do go public on NASDAQ, we got some really cool celebrity type investors from Steve Aoki, Imagine Dragons, some professional athletes, some 
who's who in the industry. That will be fun. So who knows? Maybe we'll be doing something not just in the uh, metaverse or building you a set, but we may even have a DJ perform. I know he's done it before. So it'll be fun. Look for us to go public uh, sometime after Labor Day. And uh, we're really excited on uh, what we could do at NASDAQ on the public markets, not just for retail investors, but also for institutional. We're really excited to partner up with Tom and his team. Yeah, Labor Day this year. So it's yeah, we're hoping to be sometime after Labor Day this year. Okay. Correct. Okay. Well, please keep me posted. It was wonderful to get an update on this. Congratulations on your success. And I look forward to an update in the future. Thanks, Jane. Thanks. Thanks, Jane.